Is science a social construct? Well, yes. What does that mean though? Well, <laughs> that's the thing, it, it depends. It could mean anything from science was invented by humans to there are no scientific facts and everything is just made up. The first one would be pretty uncontroversial, while the second one is uh, one hell of a hot take. So the real question isn't, is science a social construct, but in which sense is science a social construct? To start this whole discussion off, let me introduce you to the Mott and the Bailey. Both are parts of medieval castles. The Mott is the hill on which the heavily fortified keep is built, while the Bailey is the larger area behind the fence or wall. When attacked, first the Bailey can be defended along the perimeter wall. However, if the attackers are too strong, this position is too exposed and the defenders instead retreat onto the more solid Mott. Figuratively, the Mott and Bailey is a kind of argumentation, a debate strategy. It works by making a strong and uh, often extreme form of argument, which is therefore difficult to defend. But when opposed, you can retreat to a more general and mild form of the argument, which is much harder to attack. Like in a real fortress, when your flimsy position, the Bailey, is under pressure, you retreat to a stronger one, the Mott. All while pretending that both of these positions are really the same. For example, you could advance the bird intelligence hypothesis, stating birds are just as intelligent as humans. When pressed, you retreat to some birds can use some tools. Who could dispute that? Obviously, the bird intelligence hypothesis is clearly true. Now, this way of arguing is occasionally also used in academia, especially in some fields of the humanities and social sciences. All right, you get the drift and you can probably already tell where this will be going. So, back to social constructs. Social constructivism is certainly one of the most hyped ideas in discourse today. Which also means that um, a lot of people throw it around casually without really being able to define it. So uh, that is where we shall start. Most basic definitions of social constructs hold that a thing is constructed if it isn't inevitable. So it could have been defined in a different way. It is produced by intentional human activity. Or, in more simple terms, we invented it. We made it up. A good example is the concept of money. Money does not occur in nature. We invented money. And as long as we all play along and accept that money has a value, it does. Or an example closer to physics. Uh, time is in many ways a social construct. We invented it to describe things that are recurring and periodic. Time is an interesting example because it shows us that there can be differences between social constructs. Some are completely arbitrary, while others are based on something real. A day, for example, is the time it takes for the Earth to complete the full rotation around its own axis. We experience that as um, day and night and sunrise and sundown and everything between. An hour, on the other hand, is completely random. It doesn't describe any real process or anything. It was just a practical invention. So does that mean that everything is a social construct? Let's try a simplified model for this. This is you. You can think and visualize things. This is the mental world. 
Also, there are things outside of you which you can perceive and interact with, including other people. That is the physical world. And as our mind is the interpreter of everything we observe, these two are inseparably linked. Whenever we think or talk about something, we form a concept of it in the mental world, a construct. In this sense, everything is constructed. Everything we can imagine or communicate to others is constructed. Language or hand gestures or math are used to convey those constructed ideas and are themselves constructs because we invented them. Many constructs are descriptions of objects or events in the physical world, for example, tree or night. These are concepts that have a direct representation outside ourselves, that cause an image of it in our mind. Other concepts are more abstract, like uh, knowledge or duty. These may also have connections to the real world, but uh, no direct representation. For example, a student writing down the correct answers to a test is connected to the concept of knowledge, but it isn't the same as knowledge. Okay, so everything we deal with is a construct in a very basic sense, um, in an almost uh, meaninglessly basic sense. But isn't there more to it? So the type of constructs we've been discussing so far have not been especially exciting or controversial. Because I've been talking about the minimal definition of constructivism, which is uh, pretty much uncontested. And uh, it's also the one you can always retreat to. Because even if we assume some sort of naive realism, Which means that the physical world both exists and our perception of it is accurate. There is still a degree of constructivism about it. For example, even if gravity exists as a real effect in the real world, our description of it, the word gravity and any mathematical model we have formed, are social constructs that we use to talk about it. The most common position of social constructivists is that while the world may very well exist and there may be real processes going on, our description of those processes are influenced by society. The weak version of this argument posits that while scientists in part actually do science as they claim, all their thoughts and actions are influenced by their social environment and culture. In the strong version of this, scientific facts have not necessarily anything to do with the world out there, but are simply made up and negotiated by scientists. So atoms and quarks are not discovered, but constructed. Basically, you can think of this as a slider. Is the influence of society small or large, or even is there nothing else? Again, note that it is easy to play the Morton Bailey game with these positions. All of those constructivist ideas come out of the post-structural and post-modern bubble in academia and have become very popular over the last couple decades. So, according to social constructivists, science is just a game played by scientists. Um, a game of credibility gain. In other words, scientists are allegedly just playing elaborate theater, constantly vying to increase their prestige and credibility. While this idea can be somewhat made to fit the, the social sciences, because those are about humans and what humans do, there are a very awkward fit for the natural sciences. Because those create things like uh, smartphones or heart surgeries or aeroplanes and 
they don't just work because we pretend they do. They actually work. And social constructivists cannot really give convincing reasons why all of those things work, while all of the theories they're based on are just made up. The best that they can come up with is that scientists who immerse themselves in their chosen field become really good at guessing. Yeah, I know. Instead, social constructivism relies on pointing out any form of social mechanisms or social influence that happens within science. And they do exist, of course they do, because scientists are humans and they do human things. Does this social influence explain all of science though? Only if that's the only thing you allow yourself to see. Again, yes, there is a social dimension to science. There are citations and awards and institute politics and journal articles and grants and collaborations and feuds and outright fraud. All of this is really happening in science. And Yes, there have been scientific results that rested on rather questionable proofs. For example, the 1919 observations that allegedly verified Einstein's theory of general relativity, full story here, were not really that strong. It's fair to say that Eddington presented the results as proof because that's what he wanted. All of these things are true, but if you think that this means that science is just a social game, this means there are two crucial misunderstandings. First, just because science does have a social dimension, that does not mean that is all it is. This kind of argument is actually one of the most common and annoying fallacies today. It's basically a meme by now. People often think that just because they understand one facet of a thing, this means they understand the entire thing. That's always the problem when you go into an analysis with um, a set narrative in mind already, because you will only see those things that fit your conclusion. Second, and even more importantly, science is self-checking and self-correcting. Yes, the 1919 results were too weak to rule in favor of relativity. But we didn't stop there. Dozens of similar but more refined experiments were done in the decades after it, giving much better and clearer results, all in full agreement with relativity. Back to the original question. Is science a social construct? Yes, in the sense that the concept of science, the, the idea of science, is man-made. Yes, in the sense that Scientists, as humans, are also affected by social influences. But the narrative that science is just a social game and all scientific facts are just constructs, color me unconvinced. And severely underwhelmed. If you think that this is anything but a hot take, you're not a serious person. And don't let anybody trick you. All of these are different ideas. They're not the same thing. 